Welcome. Thanks for attending the Accessibility Panel, Adventures in Disability Equity. I'm Sasha Blair Goldenson from Google Maps, and I'm co-hosting with Paige Evie from Google Travel. Let's get right to it. So the agenda, we're gonna have virtual panelists from four really cool projects that use different aspects of mapping technology to enable people with disabilities to explore and adventure around the world, just like non-disabled people. We're gonna be joined uh, after Paige and I speak, we'll be joined by Lu Luis Arteda from World Enabled and Cities for All for an international perspective on what partner cities can do with the Global Compact. Then we'll switch to recorded remarks from Hermes Tuan, who draws on years as a local guide and for his experience with accessible life. And it's a playbook for building accessible exploration guides on the Google Maps platform. Then we'll have Kim Palmer from Miles Partnership, who will speak about working directly with destination cities to help them understand and welcome travelers with disabilities. And after the pre-tape segments, Alvaro Silberstein from Wheel the World will join us for a live roundtable question Q&A. But first, Paige and I will talk about what Google Maps and travel platforms are doing to lay the foundational pieces and help users directly so that part with partner projects like these. But let me begin with context. What do we mean by disability equity? Here, it means ensuring that our community, people with disabilities, get maps and travel information that meets our needs, physical accessibility information. The simplest example of equity, wheelchair users like me cannot, could always get the same address as non-disabled users, but that was only equitable if it told us whether or not it was wheelchair accessible. So that's the difference, giving that extra information, not just the same thing that non-disabled people get, that's what we need. Now is equity a new focus for Google and Geo for Good? Not really. The Geo for Good community has always focused on making impact, recognizing the needs and responding with geotech solutions. The panelists we're hearing from are doing just that, making impact across a range of users from individuals going on a beach vacation to local government committees planning a development agenda. But the bottom line is that letting people with disabilities use maps just as non-disabled people do and enabling us to have adventures, these are projects that do this to let us live like everyone else. And I'll just note that this photo here is two wheelchair users on a beach, and that's from Wheel the World, Alvaro Silverstein's organization. But what does my role at Google Maps manifest in, in disability equity? It's about building a foundation, creating a disability equity baseline. So we've been ensuring that Maps core functions work for people with disabilities who have been excluded, those being those core functions being where to go and how to get there in ways that are inclusive for people across the disability spectrum. So from, for those with mobility impairments, we launched wheelchair accessible transit directions in 2018 and made accessible places more prominent in 2020. For vision impairments, we made walking directions with additional detail and reassurance in, in 2019. And most recently for the deaf and hard of hearing community, we started showing places with assistive listening or hearing loops. And I wanna say there are also two community contributed data ecosystems. First being the Google local guides, like this t-shirt with more than 100 million users sharing tips from their favorite places and helping people with disabilities locate more than 40 million accessible places worldwide. And the second is community organizations like the Hearing Loss Association of America that use GeoData Upload, a tool for contributing data at scale so that users can now see more than 20,000 locations with assistive listening. So those launches have been part of the equity foundation we've been building on Google Maps. But some adventures require longer journeys. And for that, Paige Ive is going to tell you what Google Travel is doing on accessibility. Paige is a researcher on the travel team who is passionate about accessibility, and she has won national scholarships and recognition 
for her advocacy on disability inclusion. Thanks, Sasha. Hi, I'm Paige, and I'm a user experience researcher on the Google Travel team, and I've been on the team for about four years. My primary focus is on places to stay, but my research about accessibility spans across all areas of travel, which includes hotels, vacation rentals, flights, things to do, and explore. I'm excited to get us started by sharing some of our findings and to learn from our panelists today. To start off, let's do a brief introduction to accessibility. Accessibility means ensuring that people with disabilities can perceive, navigate, and interact with tools in their environment equally and without barriers. Disabilities are often thought of in a few segments, and those segments are vision, hearing, mobility, cognition and neurodiversity, and speech. But it's important to keep in mind that there is major variation in the lived experiences and needs of each individual within and across these groups. And also there can be overlapping impairments between groups. By now, you may have also learned that disabilities are not always permanent. They can also be temporary or situational. So what does this mean? For example, a traveler may have a situational limited mobility due to carrying a stroller or heavy luggage, or a user may be visually impaired because they are trying to use a map while driving a car. Or you may be impaired because you are unable to hear and understand in the environment you're in if you're in a country where you don't speak the language. Assistive technologies often help everyone, regardless of whether their disability is situational, permanent, or temporary. So with that said, what is the Google Travel team up to? We're working to understand the needs in the context of travel, and we've started with a deep dive into motor impairments. When you think wheelchair accessible, important things that come to mind may be flooring thresholds, door widths, and turning spaces. But there's so much more. For example, bed height is also important. An individual has to be able to transfer from their chair to the bed safely. And bed height, like many other details, isn't something that users can find or expect to be consistent. So how do users find this information? They look at photos, they contact hotels and business owners, and they get recommendations from people who have the same needs as them. Visual content and mapping technologies play a critical role for this, and that's because everybody has different needs and needs to find out different details. Before I hand off to Hermes, I want to leave you with this. The behavior among individuals with disabilities are often more extreme than typical, but not fundamentally different. Looking at photos and seeking recommendations are common amongst all travelers, but the need for this data and for specific details is more extreme. And now I'm happy to hand off to Hermes, who has been a major force for building communities in our local guide program. He's going to teach us about the Accessible Life Project, using MAPS technology in a way very connected to travel and accessibility. Welcome, welcome to Accessible Life. My name is Hermes, I am from Italy, and with my association, that is Progetto Recycle, we work to build accessible places. What does it mean? We don't build physically the place, but we create accessible life. Why accessible life? Well, it's very simple because Let's say that describing an accessibility of an outdoor place is very different from describing an accessibility of a building, as we can see on the next slide. So the accessibility of a building is linked to its infrastructure. Through Google Maps, we can easily identify the main parameter to define an indoor place as accessible. Next slide, please. And where we can see that no, I'm, I'm sorry, back to the previous slide, I'm, I'm just confusing. Well, the accessibility of an outdoor place is mainly linked to his physical structure, as well as the infrastructure. The accessibility of an outdoor place is related to the different needs of every user. What is accessible for one person is not accessible for another one. Size, type of route, slope, services available are difficult variables to categorize. As well explained by patient intuition, limited mobility is a word that can be applied of a wide range of people. And so if we move to the next slide, for this reason, what we want to do is to show instead to tell. It means that the key is to give to everyone, to every user, the possibility to decide what is subjectively accessible? It means that the user needs to see. And for this reason, we collect images of information about outdoor places and we put all of them in a custom maps. Then we link all the accessible places in Google Earth. 
Accessible Life is basically a collective map, a puzzle of maps, built by contributors like us. And if we move to the next one, we will see that Accessible Life in Google Earth is basically a visual search system that allows us to explore the Earth to discover accessible outdoor location. The search that is completely visual takes places, place crossing successive layers till you reach the area you're looking for. Our goal is to pivot an equitable, scalable platform to create a platform that can adapt to the number of contributions and remain fast and easy to navigate at the same time. From the technical point of view, because I, we don't forget that we are here for good, Accessible Life in Google Earth is made by a series of different projects linked to each other. With this kind of structure, in a few clicks, you can reach every accessible place already available on the project. And in the next slide, we can see the tools that we are going to use. Well, we use a wide range of tools, but we use basically Google Earth, that is our search engine, Google My Maps, that is where we give every detail of an accessible place, Google Maps to provide links to the services because as Sasha explained, a lot of local guides and a lot of people are adding information in there. And Google Street View, because with Street View, we give the possibility to the people to have a visual and immersive experience. So thanks, everyone. And if you want to know more, join us tomorrow in the Mapping the Accessibility Meetup. Hi, everyone. I'm Kim Palmer from Miles Partnership. And I am the director of our Destination Optimization Program. Uh, Miles Partnership is a strategic uh, marketing consultancy in the travel and tourism space. We work 100% in travel and tourism. Uh, and in fact, the mission statement of our organization is that we enrich lives through travel. Um, through our 67 years of work in the industry, we've worked with more than 150 destinations around the world, as well as more than 50 hospitality businesses. Um, if you look to sort of our core values as a company, one of the things that stands out that really aligns with the accessibility initiative is that we really believe in the transformative power of travel and really focus on empowering travelers to see, do, and experience more by creating solutions that elevate our partners, which in this case are destinations and the travel and tourism industry. So in our role, we are often uh, called upon to build destination websites, uh, printed visitor guides, and other materials that are customer facing for destinations. Uh, next slide. Uh, specifically as it relates to travelers with disabilities, um, we have, as an organization, a, a great commitment to the diversity, equity, and inclusion for travelers uh, and helping destinations uh, really put, um, put themselves forward as accessible uh, across the market. Uh, on, in our organization, we do have a dedicated team of uh, digital accessibility specialists so that as we are building websites, we are um, building them with an eye towards accessibility for everyone who may be accessing that website. Um, and as we build these products, uh, I th we understand it's really important to just be baseline. You know, we, we want to do more than is just the bare minimum for uh, checking the box, so to speak, around accessibility. And we want these decisions to be informed by the perspective of those users who actually have these disabilities. Um, as an organization, we are partnered with TravelAbility. Uh, and through that partnership, we have uh, recently done some custom research. One is the State of the American Travelers with Disabilities, uh, which is a survey of American travelers with disabilities and their unique needs which was just released this August, uh, and as well as an evaluation of what we call the Accessible Destinations Audit, where we have looked at the websites of destinations, um, found the pages that uh, are relevant to accessibility and evaluated what we found there. Next slide. Um, and so I think what we bring to the table today is, a, is to tell you a little bit more about what is a destination organization. Uh, these are public or public privately funded organizations who are solely responsible for promoting their community as a travel destination. 
Um, consequentially through that, they're also enhancing public image uh, for the place as a place to work and live. And at the end of the day, creating economic e opportunities for the entire community through travel. The important piece as it relates to accessibility is the strong relationships that destination organizations have with their community stakeholders and with the local businesses in the travel and tourism space from which we need information about their accessibility in order to share it with customers. And those destinations consequentially create a platform to share that information with travelers themselves. Hello, and welcome everyone to the live Q&A portion of the Accessibility and Disability Inclusion Panel. I'm Sasha from the Google Maps team, and along with Paige from Google Travel, we are thrilled to be here and introduce the Geo for Good community to our panelists, Kim, Hermes, and Alvaro. Now, we just heard from Kim about Miles Partnership's work to help destination management organizations welcome travelers with disabilities and really enrich our lives through travel. And now, and also about how Google Maps and travel are creating the core features for disability equity, a disability equity baseline. Going forward, Maps platform experts like you in the Geo for Good community can begin to combine Maps data and Maps and data so that cities and other stakeholders can visualize, measure, and prioritize accessibility. And that's not just theoretical. In April, we held a design sprint with partners from World Enabled to build three prototypes. And that was a city accessibility scorecard for measurement, a geospatial tool for visualization, and an investment modeler for prioritizing accessible development. But those are, are city scale. Human scale is just as important. And you just heard from Hermes about how Accessible Life is a great example of a community member stepping up and using Google Maps platform to be more disability inclusive with amazing Earth Engine journeys highlighting accessibility. Now, quick reminder to the audience, we've got great questions coming in, but it's not too late to submit more. So go to the link right below the video. But before we get to those live audience questions, I want to introduce a panelist who we haven't heard from yet. Alvaro Silberstein is the founder of Wheel the World, a site for people with disabilities to research, plan, and book travel. Alvaro, can you tell us about Wheel the World and how it's different from other travel sites? Thanks, Sasha. Uh, always great to, to, to be with you uh, talking about accessibility. Yes, so Wheel the World, we are an accessibility booking platform for people with accessibility needs to find and book not only uh, hotels, but also things to do uh, that are accessible for them. Through our platform, our users, they sign up and they fill out their accessibility profile, stating what are their accessibility needs, and our system match what are the adventures and also places to stay that they can book that exactly match those needs. And so far, more than 1,500 people has booked adventures and trips with us to different places around the world. That is just fantastic, Alvaro. And I've, I've been looking at the site and I can't wait to go snorkeling with sharks in the Yucatan or to a water or to an adaptive ski class in near Chile where you are. Um, I just, that's going to be awesome. Uh, 
But I'm especially happy because you and I, Alvaro, first met at the local guide summit in 2017. And that's also where I met Hermes in the before times. You've both done so much for disability inclusion. Thank you. Uh, but we're not done, right? I love the idea of these projects all working together and with, with the G4G, Geo for Good community, building on this MAPS Accessibility Foundation, the data, eco, the data ecosystems, and more. Now, Paige, I know that you've been watching the live questions coming in. What are people asking? Thanks, Sasha. Um, the first question is for Kim. Can a hotel or a B&B &B increase their relationship and possible contacts with guests by using accessibility and accessible life to give better information to their guests? Yes, I definitely think that the more information that um, both uh, hotels and B&Bs and really any tourism business can provide about the different types of accessibility available at their property only makes them uh, that much more welcoming to folks with uh, different kinds of disabilities uh, to better understand what their unique experience will be at that property. Um, and the more that information is shared across uh, platforms, uh, such as Accessible Life and others, uh, the more visibility that property would ultimately uh, receive. Thanks, Kim. This next question is for Hermes. Um, Erna asks, I am contributing to Accessible Life in Google Earth, but I know that creating an accessible place, given if it is exciting, takes a lot of time. What do you think will be the next step? More volunteers at work or something different? Well, this is a great question. I mean, because what we are doing right now with Accessible Life is just to show a way. And what we want to show is just to get to the previous question is that when a person is moving and is traveling, of course, he's looking for an hotel, but he's not going to live in the hotel. He's just going to sleep there. And then he wants to know the area around. Okay. So doing this as a volunteer, we know that it's very hard. but the way that we want to show is that we can have in the future an automotive system and an in artificial intelligence that can recognize photo, can recognize places, location, and can suggest to us what is accessible and what it is not. What we do with accessible life is just to show to the people the places, and then we want to give them the possibility to choose this. So I think that in the future, we can really populate everything with an automotive system and accessible life can become eventually the one that confirm if the place is accessible or not. Thank you so much. Um, next question is for Alvaro. Can you suggest ways maps could help travelers with disabilities plan trips? Sure, I, I think that there's so many uh, information that allow someone to understand if some, something is accessible or not for them. Because when we say something is accessible, well, that, that depends on each person many times. And there's information that can be objective in a, by maps. For example, inclinations to go from, one, from point A to point B. What are the barriers that are there? Uh, what, how the place looks look like, right? Uh, how far is the closest bathroom or parking lot, etc. So the, the information in detail, I think, is key for someone to understand if, some, if a place is um, accessible or not. And a map can, can be very relevant uh, for that to, to, to happen. Alvaro, do you have any suggestions of information that's, um, that you think should be prioritized to getting that accessible to people on maps? I, I would say um, inclinations, yes, like how, how inclinations from point A from point B, distances, and also uh, the presence of barriers or not, right? Like today, there's so many information in, in, uh, in maps, but not, not maybe like barriers that might be in a sidewalk or in, in a trail, etc. cetera. Uh, and that things can be relevant that today you cannot find in a, in a map, right? Thank you so much. Yeah, that really resonates with uh, everything that we've been hearing. Um, next question is for Kim. How do you 
how do your destinations client how do you de sorry how do your destination clients use or would they wish to use map tools to showcase accessibility information such as place level information and transportation accessibility or um, the details along the lines that Alvaro was just speaking to uh, sure. So destination organizations are focused on providing content to prospective travelers that both inspires and informs. So map tools in particular really fall into that informational category. Um, our accessible destinations audit really surfaced that uh, destination organizations need to sort of go beyond mobile accessibility and look into the needs of audio, auditory, visual, cognitive sensory considerations as well. So uh, for a destination, having a map of the area that would either allow the user to self-identify what categories of accessibility they would like shown um, on the map um, or um, the ability to have separate maps based on uh, being filtered by ability would be beneficial. Uh, and integration of visual content into those maps would be something destinations would really want to feature. Um, there are several destinations in our community that are integrating 360 views of various locations into the maps content on their sites. And that's great because it gives us a real world view um, to confirm accessibility. Uh, TravelOregon.com is an example of a site uh, that has a map with a filter for locations uh, for accessible travel. Um, which is great, but I also think it could be improved by uh, both 360 imagery and having more data points, um, some of the things you guys have brought up here uh, that are available to those travelers. Thank you so much, Kim. Um, and this question is for all panelists and very similar to what we just asked, Kim. This question is from Brandon, Brandon Kay. Um, so uh, the question is that this part, this, uh, Attendee suggests an option with Google, within Google Maps to allow a user to toggle on a disability accessibility layer, similar to the biking or current COVID-19 info. How might this info be useful to your line of work? Um, Alvaro, would you mind starting us, starting us off? Yes, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's super relevant, right? Like it's, it's information that, uh, that can actually make you a decision to go to a, a, a specific place or not. So uh, to having that specific information as today is COVID, accessibility information is totally relevant for, for, for making a, a decision to go into an adventure. Great, thank you so much. Um, lastly, we're going to end, or actually, sorry, uh, I jumped the gun. Um, Hermes and Kim, could you have a chance to answer that question? Yes, of course I have. I mean, when I started Accessible Life, it, it was just for the reason that Alvaro said before, because not all the information can be actually found in Google Maps. And also, all the information, if you're talking about an outdoor place, are not located in the right position where the place is, or the point, or the ramp, or the road with a high inclination. Having this in Google Maps would be a dream, but I don't know if it, in this way we will go to overcrowd information in there. Our dream was, will be to have the possibility to select one layer in Google Maps where to have this kind of information. Right now, this is not actually possible because Google Maps is giving information of a single point of interest, I mean, a business, but in a large place, this is quite impossible to do. You can do with 360, but not with the other information. Thank you so much. Um, Kim, due to us running down on time, I'm going to segue into the next question, which could be combined with the prior one. Um, so for each panelist, I, I'd like to ask you for your call to action to our audience. This is an audience of builders. Um, and what tools or improvements would you ask this audience to build for different segments? When you think about it, there's the provider side, like business owners and tourism agencies and destination marketing organizations, and there's the consumer travel side. Could you please talk to us um, to give us a call to action? Um, I think for destinations, it's about gathering more of the right information for different kinds of, of disabilities and 
that really should be done by collaborating with travelers who have lived experiences and perspectives uh, to contribute. Um, what do they want to see? What information do they need? I think for destination marketing organizations, uh, having a tool that would allow them to contribute that information into uh, the MAPS content uh, would be really beneficial. A destination organization has close relationships with the entire travel and tourism industry in a community, and they could really be a beneficial partner to help at scale to gather that content or to take particular images that are needed for certain locations. Thank you so much, Kim. Hermes, could you uh, give us a call to action? Sorry, yeah. We have a lot of possibility for people to build and to improve the information in Google Maps. But for me, what we need really to do right now is to find a way to make it automatic from the, the people that is designing map and that is working on that should think about a way to acquire information in that way. Right now, we are able to recognize photo, to recognize everything with, with automated system and it's time to move that in a level that can be accessible to everyone. I'm actually going to jump in here because we're our, our time is running down. And I just want to say thank you so much to our panelists. But, but also I want to acknowledge Olga D's question very briefly, which is co-design with people with disabilities so important. And that's absolutely something that we're doing. And uh, as Kim just spoke to. But now let me thank all of our wonderful esteemed panelists for joining us today, all the viewers who have joined us too. And next up, please stay tuned for the lightning talks and have a great summit, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.